And we're live, I think. I think we're live. Nice. Nice. Uh, we're live here today. Uh, Donnie, uh, great to see everyone. Live on LinkedIn. Stockholm, Sweden. Donnie, uh, every Wednesday, 2.30 p.m. Swedish, I go live with a cool startup or cool people uh, or cool ideas. And today, I have a kinder egg of coolness because it's all both a cool thing, cool people, and a cool idea, and everything is fantastic. So today, I'm here with Relux Robotics. I'm here with Fredrika and Marcus. Yep. Uh, Fredrika is the CTO of Redox, mm -hmm. and Marcus is the COO uh, of, uh, of Redox. Uh, so, in a nutshell, before we go into who you are, what is Redox Robotics? What, what do you do? <laughs> yes, uh, we make robots, essentially. You uh, make robots, essentially. Well, there's actually yeah. two robots here. There's one less <laughs> work in progress thing here, and one more a bit more polished here. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. Cool. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. So the general idea is to uh, replace the like, human worker with re that does repetitive or like boring work and replace it with a robot. And our first like market vertical is um, actually golf ranges. So golf ranges. So yeah. I can I don't have to play golf anymore. I can set out a robot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wish. But that's the most boring thing ever. No, sorry. No, no. All the golfers out there. <laughs> Uh, no, it's actually for the workers on the range that drives around every day in a tractor, yeah. collecting all the balls that the golfers hit out on the range. Like when they warm up, they have their whole like bucket of golf balls and just hit them out. And someone needs to collect them all because the next day it's going to happen again and again. Yeah. Um, so so that's, that's kind of a boring, repetitive work. Picking up, actually, collecting the golf balls on golf courses, which is a, a, a bigger and more tedious job than we can imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And um, that's something that I think that's something that you actually didn't you do that for like a side gig uh, thing? No, I've tried it, but it's not <laughs> like a work. But yeah, I've tried it, and it's not so fun. <laughs> because I remember in the beginning of this case, uh, one of the things you know, I remember you saying, mm. Marcus, by the way, who was the CEO of uh, of Redox, was uh, spending time on a driving range, and then you know understanding how tedious and also uh, time consuming time consuming and personal intense the whole thing of picking up because they don't all they, they come from sort of one place but they don't sort of end up in one place they sort of end up all over the place yeah they're spread out over the entire range yeah exactly so yeah. that was the, sort of the first idea of why can't we do this with a machine instead mm. Mm. exactly and when, when was that how long time ago was that for years uh, yeah uh, or even more maybe it started as a like bachelor project at KTH so we had <laughs> Yeah, so that was <laughs> quite a while ago. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then we had some time to do this. Like we got to choose our own project. Yeah. So uh, Marcus talked to me about this idea that he had, and we decided to give it a try because we had this time and like the resources. Uh, cool. To just try it. And then, then you, yeah, then you. That was at KTH during your studies, and then you also ended up at KTH Innovation, which uh, helped you mm -hmm. get everything together. Exactly. Uh, and then from there you went to Sting, right? Which is yeah. the big incubator in Stockholm. Yeah. And then today we're actually visiting you in your new super cool offices <laughs> in Stockholm. Yeah. Where yeah. He's, I was going to say a sea view, but it's actually a, like a, a canal view. <laughs> uh, it's a yeah. beautiful view, by the way, for everybody. Uh, in the summer you can come by and, and check out the robots and, and have a look at the view as well. We have some more people in the office. We have, we have Isaac as well over there. <laughs> behind the camera. Say hi, Isaac. <laughs> and then we have Martin uh, behind the computers over there. Many and then uh, Frederick, the CEO as well. Thank you, Frederick, for letting me come and disturb the team today. <laughs> yeah, that's okay, perfectly cool. fine. <laughs> anyway, so let's, let's just talk about the... And these are the actual robots. Yes. The actual hardware. I mean, and it's, it's always... I mean, that's a challenge with hardware because you can't just sort of code an app and then put it on App Store and then it, and everything works. Unfortunately, I mean, not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I wish. But, but you actually did like everything on the robots, didn't you? I mean, you, yeah, I mean yeah. every part was a, a, a challenge for you because it was one part uh, business idea, but also one part sort of tech challenge, cool mm -hmm. thing to do, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess we had a problem to find like a good platform to start off with. So we can. That's why we had to build it ourselves. Yeah. Uh, so, so you, but, but I mean, awesome. it, the advantages. I mean, you know this platform, but from, from down to every single nut and bolt. That's the upside with doing everything yeah. yourself. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you've actually built sort of. I mean, and what about? I mean, 
How about, oh yeah, of course, we're in a, like a workshop kind of place. So if you hear any drills going, it's of course construction going on. <laughs> um, but what about like navigation systems? Because it's a, it's a fully autonomous, self-navigating robot. robot that they, so I mean, I will not compare it to a lawnmower because I know it's, it's a lot smarter than your normal household lawnmower. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but when it comes to navigation, how does it navigate? How does it actually find its way to the golf balls? Uh, so, in the beginning, when we install the robot on a golf club, we do uh, like a mapping of the golf range, so over the entire area that the robot's going to cover. And we do this like by GPS tagging yeah. the area, essentially, so you don't need to like dig down those perimeter wires to use for long overs, etc. And then um, this will be like translated into a map that the robot uses. And um, yeah, after that, it navigates with all the sensors like GPS, IMU, um, odometry, uh, some yeah. other so thing. I mean, uh, it sees as well. It has cameras as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it is an right. like, fully autonomous self-driving robot that you've developed uh, from scratch. Yeah, yeah. that's actually. I mean, it's, that is, I mean, I'm just saying that is actually super cool. But it's not <laughs> because an, an average and correct me if I'm wrong here, but an average lawnmower that you buy as a consumer, mm. you have like a magnetic strip or something that you put around your your sort of garden. Yeah. That controls how how it drives, but this doesn't have mm. that kind of no. thing. This actually has a map, and then it navigates. But does it does it does it know where the how does it know where the balls are? By the way, does it? Uh, well, it doesn't, but we can kind of estimate like where the balls will end up. Yeah. That there yeah. will be like the distribution distribution of the balls. There will be more in the center and less like on the outsides. Uh, and since we know where the robot is, and we can drive like systematically to cover an area. Yeah. Uh, that's like a quite optimal way of doing it compared to lawnmowers that just like go in an angle until they hit this like metal wire and yeah. then they pick another angle at random and then so they the, I mean the lawnmowers and the, the vacuum cleaners they're, I mean, they're quite stupid they just go sort of, you know, like that but this more is actually yeah. more of a following a map and then also trying to understand where the you know you map out sort of where mm. the balls should be mm. Mm. does it is there any learning thing going on as well as it, you know, mm -hmm. the, as it picks up balls? And a little bit, like it's under implementation, so it's not yeah. fully there yet. But we have a sensor on the trailer part, which is yeah. here. here. This one? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This is actually the ball picker. Yes. Uh, so this is the trailer that goes onto the robots, and uh, it just picks them up by a mechanical construction, basically. Okay. Uh, or the balls get pinched in here, and then they end up in here. Okay. So they like squeezed in there, and then up there, and then it. Yes. And when it's full, it goes back to base. <laughs> yes. And then, yeah. Yes. It empties the trailer. Okay. Um, um, yes, but this has a weight sensor, so that we know uh, if they are getting like the rate of the how fast the balls are getting into the trailer. Yeah. We can detect that, and then we can use that data uh, to make it smarter, essentially. So this is actually not only smarter, but it actually is also be going. It's going to be a lot smarter than anything else out there. Over time, exactly, yeah. since we can gather data and see what the course. are. And I, mean, okay, and, and I know that you picked you know, golf and golf ranges as a first business vertical, but mm. just as you're explaining it to me, and as I understand, I mean, this could, this could be used for many other different things. I mean, we don't need to explore that now, but mm. I think that you're building something really, really versatile here, mm. which could be used mm. for many different things, even though I, I, the, the obvious choice now to to go for golf where there's a need. I, I saw the picture on their website, there's a picture of like the old tractor way of doing it and then yeah. the new robot way of doing it. And it's just it's such an obvious you know, choice to make. Uh, as usual, I will be publishing a, a short uh, clip after this uh, with a film showing the whole robot. But go online to reloadsrobotics.com and you'll see a film of how things work yeah. as well. That's a good idea. Uh, I, I yes. guess I can just mention that uh, for our part, we are mostly focusing on the robots that we see here. And then we have a business partner who's doing the trailer part for the golf vertical. Oh, okay. So the idea with our company is to focus on the robotics yeah. stuff. Yeah. And so, then yeah. that platform we can use in different areas. Okay. So we so don't try to develop a, a specific part no, for no. the I get it. vertical. So you're not a golf company, you're a robot company. <laughs> That's the yeah. idea. Yeah, exactly. but that makes sense. So, that makes sense. So, yeah, but that makes all sense in the world that you're focusing on the robot and then you have a partner who is in the golf because business exactly. today. Mm. And knows how that's yeah, working. Which, of course, makes all the sense in the world. And that is also how you could move to different verticals as well. That's the idea. I think that if we're going to, you know, if we're going to, I mean, all of these live broadcasts, we try and sort of 
think about one thing in the the, the whole journey that has been a, like a, a learning process and a challenge. And I think that if I can just say, as an, an outside, on, you know, looking in, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, and I've seen uh, a big part of the, the journey, I'd say that the whole idea of, you know, oh, we can do all of this. Mm. Look, you know, all of these things are possible. Mm. But then, you know, but then systematically choosing the first and, you know, most obvious business vertical and then going there and, you know, making business happen and getting that solid and, and you know, sharpening your teeth on something that actually works mm. and then from there move on. I think that's been a, for me, I think you've done that in a very, very good way. Because I know that you were presented with like a thousand alternatives in the yeah. beginning. Mm -hmm. exactly. uh, and I think it was very smart of you to also pick one that you, you knew, you knew people there, you could get your access to clients and access to market. Yeah. Uh, and also the, the need was, and there was a bigger perception of the need there as well, where you very quickly could, you, but you have robots out there. I mean, it's, <laughs> you have some. Yeah, there are some uh, out doing their job. So I, you can actually see them on Golf Rangers today. Yes. Oh, yes. So, well, here in Stockholm, we can see them at Troxhammar Golf Club and Haninge Golf Club. And yeah. then we have some in the South Sweden as well, in uh, Båstad and Ljunghusen. And uh, yeah, there are more, more to come. I, I, yeah, more to come. I, I'm, just, I'm just so impressed because I remember, I remember meeting you very early on in the beginning. I remember, I mean, we were all over the place with all kinds mm -hmm. of ideas. Yeah. And to see you, you know, come this far where you are now with actual sales going on, a very focused business idea, a very focused product, beautiful robots, fully <laughs> functional ball pickers. I mean, yeah. this is this is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> well, uh, thanks a lot. No, not really. I mean, it's, uh, for me, it's, it's, um, it's a joy to come out and uh, be, uh, get, you know, be able to visit you as well yeah. and say hi. Mm. Uh, anything else that you feel you want to tell the world here while we have another last minute in our live broadcast? Uh, I think that's all. I think that's all for now. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for letting me come out today. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you, Fredrika. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody else in the room, thanks for having me here. And we're looking forward to following your journey. Everybody go online, relooksrobotics.com, check out the robots, send them an email, or just send them some love. Uh, it's a super cool company with wonderful people. Uh, with that, Signing off. I'll see you next week. This is Donny, live broadcast, LinkedIn, every Wednesday, 2.30 p.m. Swedish. See you next week. <laughs> Bye. Bye.